given that visualization is such an important component in understanding dynamics, we're going to have to approach this slowly, carefully. We're going to begin by thinking in terms of time. Recall that dynamical systems come in two different types. Continuous time, where time is a real variable, and discrete time, where time is an integer variable. And the solutions in these two different systems really look different. In continuous time, you have a solution of the form x of t, where t is a real variable. Whereas in discrete time, you have a sequence, xn, where n is an integer variable. Now, our first approach is one that we've seen before, where we simply graph these as functions of time. So let's start with the continuous case where what we're going to do is we're going to graph t along the horizontal axis and then x along the vertical axis. Now we've already done this once or twice already and you can see an individual solution tracing out a curve over time. This is, this is nice. It looks really good. If you plot all of the initial conditions. If you plot all of the solutions, well, maybe not all since there's infinitely many, but a large number of them, then they, they seem to fill out the Tx plane. And they give you a very, very nice uh, description of what's going on. You can see the equilibria as being constant solutions. Okay, that's fine. Now, what happens in discrete time? Well, in the simplest setting, we're simply taking the same kinds of things that we had in continuous time and discretizing them. You could plot those points. You could almost even connect those points with uh, straight line segments and, and try to pretend that you're really discretizing continuous solutions. And that's okay, but I'm afraid that there's a bit of a problem. This method, this method of plotting the solution versus time doesn't always work. When you're in a discrete time system, what can go wrong? Well, remember that sometimes you can have uh, something like multiplication by a negative number at each time step. And then in that case, you're just going boom, 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 back and forth, up and down, up and down. And wow, that would get really complicated to try to draw graphs of but I'm afraid that there's even worse. And what we're going to see later in this chapter is that you can have discrete time systems where if you try and plot the solutions over time, they're all crisscrossed, they're all on top of each other. It's a real mess. Now, these sorts of temporal plots that we're working with, they're not nothing. They're something. They're somewhat useful, but they are not the most helpful representation of data. So our next step is going to be to develop some different methods, some different approaches to visualizing dynamics. These are things we're going to call diagrams.